Well, hey, everybody, this is Heidi St. John. You guys have found me at my little corner of the internet. This is the Off the Bench podcast. And today I am honored to have my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood, back on the show. You guys write in with the best questions for Dr. Mark, and we've gotten to where we love answering them. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, welcome to the show. For those of you who have been asking about my new book, it releases on September the 5th. And the the last Tuesday in August, I'm having a book launch party at the Rusty Grape in Battleground, Washington at six o'clock. And if you guys want to find out more about that, go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash events. Also, I want you to know I'm going to be traveling again coming up very soon. I'm going to be in North Carolina and then I'm going to be in Nebraska. I've got an awesome lineup for the fall homeschool conferences that I'm speaking at, a women's retreat in North Carolina. And I want you guys to find out where I'm going to be and come join me if you can. So I'm going to link back to some of those things in the show notes today. I want to get right to my favorite guest today. Dr. Mark Sherwood is joining me again. He and his wife, Michelle, have a wonderful medical practice in Oklahoma. And he's been coming on the show now for quite a while. We got to know each other when I was running for Congress and he was running for governor in the great state of Oklahoma. And so we sort of bonded in the in the fog of war. <laughs> and uh, I love this man's heart. And I know you guys will, too. So for those of you who are new to the show, please join me in welcoming my good friend, Dr. Mark, back. Hello. Thanks for being here. It is so good to see you. And congratulations on your book. And and I'll tell you, you know, we are battle tested comrades is what we That's are. Right. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> no, we That's exactly right. That stuff. So we, we learned a lot and uh, we grew to appreciate even more and more the the beautiful nature of the founders when they allowed God to guide them toward the creation uh, of the Constitution. Wow. So true. It's so true. And we need patriots running for office. And uh, and we've got I have actually you and I've talked about this before and I can't talk about it on the show because I'm not ready. But we here at Firmly Planted, we are doing something really amazing that's uh, going to shake up politics, I think, certainly here in my neck of the woods, but also around the country. And we're going to bring integrity back to politics again. So we're excited to sort of see that unfold. I have a bunch of questions for you here. Are you ready for me to I just am, jump in? I am, mommy. This is going to be fun. All right. This is fun. We're going to start out with the VIP subscribers. We always put their questions at the top of the list. If uh, If those of you listening would like to have your question addressed first, the way to do that is become a subscriber to the Heidi St. John podcast. And then you will have a VIP link to where we get your information first. So the first one is Sarah in Tennessee. She's a VIP subscriber on Spotify. And she says, Dr. Mark, I recently had breast explant surgery. One of my implants was ruptured and I want to do a detox now that this surgery is six weeks behind me. What detox do you recommend? I've got one more question. I'm going to get to that after you answer this one. What do you recommend? So you and I talked about this right before the show, right, that I just had a guest on who had explant surgery. This is happening more and more as women are realizing, ooh, these things are not good for my body. It is. And we were talking briefly about what brought us to that point on why there's so much of that. But, yes. you know, there's a lot of people that are coming to the reality that um, whether it be saline or silicone, they yep. realize there's potential danger in those because it's a foreign body really in your body. It's And, and I get it uh, why people might want to do that. But, you know, Sarah, to your point, you made the courageous decision to do the explants. Good job. Yep. The good thing from your side, and I want to encourage you with this, is the negative potential effects of the saline is far, far less than the negative potential effects of the silicone. So good for you. As far as the detox goes, this is what I'd recommend. We have one on our website. It's called a Nutra Clear Plus. Nutra Clear Plus. It's a 15-day detox. And the reason I'm thinking that one is because it's an all-around body detox because toxins get stored in fat tissue. And as we know, the breasts are mostly fat tissue. And obviously, pulling them out, they're next to your, um, your lymph glands and things like that. So it's really important to get the fat tissue to start moving. And that particular detox does a very good job. So if you'll go there to Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi and search for Nutra, N-U-T-R-I, Clear Plus, Nutra Clear Plus, and you'll find it's a 15-day one. That's a really good detox for you, Sarah. 
I love that's a great suggestion. She her she had a she's got a two parter here. She's saying that her 14 year old daughter started her period six months ago in January. She's had one cycle, the first one, but hasn't had another one. What can I do to help her naturally regulate? This was not my experience as a teenage girl at all. And she has not taken her yet to see an OBGYN. Well, Sarah, for your 14 year old, I, I think you should probably consider yourself somewhat beneficial because that's a little bit later today on. I Apple. agree. That was my thought. Yeah, yeah that was Young my thought. women are reaching puberty at, you know, 11, 10, even below yeah. 10. So yeah. your, your daughter is, is really healthy. Honestly, with this one, I wouldn't give it a second thought. It will naturally occur. I think you just let um, God's idea of development take place. Um, obviously, communication with your daughter on what to expect is really, really good. Keeping that door open is is beautiful. But I wouldn't give it anything, any second thought to, to try to speed something up at this point. Um, yeah. Developing a good pediatric... Um, doctor that you can talk to and develop a relationship with is probably good to start initiating that conversation. Yeah, I could not agree more. And I'll just add to that, Sarah, as a mother of five daughters myself, I this has absolutely been my experience. Each one of my daughters has been different. And I agree with Dr. Mark. If you leave this thing alone, it's she's going to regulate herself, but certainly don't stress her out about it. My goodness. And I'd be thrilled if at, you know, 14 years old, I only had one, two periods a year. <laughs> I mean, happy day. What do we, you know, come on, let's be honest. All right. We got another VIP subscriber and she says, Heidi and Dr. Mark, thank you for answering my questions. My husband had myocarditis a few weeks ago. No, he never had the jab, but he does have a history of pericarditis. His MRI was clean, but the doctor put him on Metroprolo for the next six months. He's miserable on it. Fatigue, cough, sore feet, sore legs. The doctor told him it would take a while for his body to adjust but we don't like that answer. Do you have any thoughts or helpful advice? Um, yes, we do. All right, so here you go. When you have the itis, and, and this is something for people to be refreshed with and or learn something new. Itis is the suffix that's synonymous with inflammation. So anytime you have an itis, it's inflammation. When they call myocarditis, they have inflammation of the myocardium. Pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium. And this is tissues in the heart. So if you have that going on, We've got to think about reduction of the inflammation. Now, a doctor's going to put a person like that on metropolol to slow down their heartbeat, right? And that's going to make your husband fatigued. And even if he goes out and tries to exercise, his heart is prevented from elevating. It's called a beta blocker. And so that sounds terrible. Yeah, it really is something that you want to think about. So for your husband, you want to think about increasing things like magnesium. Magnesium is great for the heart. Magnesium glycinate, probably a 300 milligrams would be good. Increase coenzyme Q10 oh. to, to 400, even 600 milligrams would be absolutely outstanding. B vitamins, great. Get those going up there. D, at at least 5,000 IUs, and certainly to reduce the itis, the inflammation, have your husband get his omega-3s up there to 3 grams and more or less, and that three grams need to be about three parts to two parts, EPA over DHA. And do all of those things. And of course, you know, I'm going to say this, make sure you're doing an anti-inflammatory nutritional intake. And then know that the, the metropolol can pull out by natural reaction, the B vitamins and magnesium. That's why I said to add those back. So are you recommending, I mean, obviously you're not seeing, you haven't seen this person, which by the way, you guys can, you guys can uh, do e-visits with yep. Dr. Mark and I have done that. It's a phenomenal way to just have a personal consultation with him. But she, I wonder if she's asking, should, should he go off of this? Yeah, it's hard to say to go off of it because we have not seen the entire scope of the picture. Right, you know, exactly. Like, what are yep. the, the things that led to the pericarditis and now myocarditis? And and obviously, when you have that type of thing, inflammation around the heart, you've got to think about proper testing. Now, my advice would be to get proper testing, and certainly that's yeah. something that we could do. There's a definition of proper that I have. Probably it's different from a definition of proper that somebody else have. But I like to do a deep dive on this individual to ensure they don't have a lot of volatility around the, yeah. uh, the heart as far as vascularly. And again, the age of the person matters, too. 
Yes, absolutely true. I got another VIP or boy, we are getting VIP questions today. This is from Debbie and she says she has a problem she hopes you can help her with, Dr. Mark. About 10 years ago, she was prescribed a generic form of a sleeping pill, Lunesta, when my husband worked a graveyard shift. When he retired, I managed to lower the dose that I was taking from three milligrams to three quarters of a milligram. Basically, I cut the pill into fourths. Even though my doctor said it wouldn't hurt me to continue taking, I would like to quit taking the pills. When I've gone on vacation and forgotten them, I have trouble sleeping. I was hoping Dr. Sherwood might suggest a natural product that I could take instead. I'm a very light sleeper and over-the-counter products so far haven't helped. Debbie, great question. Lunesta being a sedative is also something that can become addictive. Right. And so that's why it's hard to get off that thing cold turkey. You've done a really good job, Debbie, of trying to cut that down a little bit. So I really That's what I was thinking. She's down to like three quarters of a milligram. That's pretty good. Excellent. There's a couple things you can do offhand. Okay. Think about the the following things. Melatonin, five HTP, skull cap, um, chamomile, passion flower are all good things to think about taking. Now, if you want to think about pulling those into one substance, um, I like something called Alpha Theta PM Plus. Alpha Theta PM Plus. Personally, that's what I take. I take it every night. It's got all of those congruency of those nutrients in there, and it does a really nice job. Now, Debbie, this is key. You might want to start off with two of those, and then you've got your little baby bit of Nunesta. And then let those things run congruently for a time, maybe a week or two. And then one night you might increase the alpha theta PM to three and then conveniently, quote unquote, forget to take your Lunesta. And let's work through that process together until you can work your way off. Take your time weaning off. Don't go cold turkey until you have a substitute that you blend in. And she can get that again at your website at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. And that's where they find these. That's where they can find these. I hope uh, I hope that helps you because, my goodness, there's a lot of people who are on these sleeping medications. Mm-hmm. And after a while, it really can mess you up. And I think it makes people feel frustrated to think that they have to take them for the rest of their lives. That's right. And there's one more thing to consider. Ladies that reach the perimenopause and into menopause they lose the production of progesterone, which typically uh, stands to reason someone will prescribe a sleeping medication because progesterone helps with sleep and helps with rest. So depending on your age and where you are, you could consider some micronized bioidentical oral progesterone that you could take at night. And that becomes not only a sleep aid, but also a breast cancer protection. That is a phenomenal idea. I'm writing that one down. (laughs) All right. I've got another VIP here, Elizabeth in Alaska. She says, Dear Dr. Mark, I appreciate you so much sharing your wisdom on Heidi's show. I've been very encouraged by you. My question is regarding the thyroid. My daughter is almost 11. Through blood work a few years ago, we discovered that she was trending toward hyperthyroidism and began looking for professional support. This year, she is leaning toward hypothyroid. We've worked with the we've worked with the pediatric endocrinologist in our area who basically explained how the thyroid worked but said my daughter wasn't to the point of medication. We have an ANP who we love and is working with us and but is learning alongside us and the advice we get everywhere is wait and see when she begins to show symptoms. But I don't want to wait for that. My husband and I both have a close family member with Hashimoto's and the thyroid Dr. Mark feels much like a mystery to me but I'm finding so little information with regard to children and thyroid issues. I realize it might be me because it doesn't become obvious until puberty. I'm exploring diets and I have observed her blood work and we remove gluten, but what else can I do? Please help. Uh, She is a very busy mom. She said she feels like she's drowning. She's a mom of eight. Well, Elizabeth, um, just wow, mom of eight. You get I know, I was like, John. moment of okay. silence for Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, the, you, you deserve a medal of honor there, Elizabeth. <laughs> and, and, uh, you're doing it all in the wonderful, great state of Alaska. What a beautiful state you have up there. That's beautiful, um, yeah. I appreciate your kind words and questions. That just really, just thank you. That really, really encourages my heart because we want to be a blessing. Now, here's the biggest deal about thyroid. Do not wait until you have symptoms. Be on point on that. 
you want to be very diligent about checking your daughter's blood work and specifically look for those antibodies because Hashimoto's can be reversed, but it can be most importantly avoided. So keep that in mind. Um, Come on. When you begin to see hypothyroid symptoms, make sure you're checking a complete picture of that thyroid, TSH, T4, and T3. Very important. I haven't seen your blood work, so make sure you're checking T3. With your young one, you don't want to just get hung up on chasing the TSH. But if you do, you're going to find yourself chasing a shadow, proverbially. That's not important, or that's important. As far as thyroid support, if your daughter's beginning to lean down towards hypo or low thyroid function, you want to consider supporting it with things that support the thyroid development. And those are things like selenium, glutathione, and even iodine. Now, you have to watch the amount of iodine because there's certain um, levels that can become negative, and obviously not enough is good, not good either. So I would suggest maybe something like a supplement called T150 would be something to consider. It's got some nice low-dose supportive nutrients that would help a hypo thyroid function. Now, from a diet standpoint, you nailed it with gluten. Gluten is one of the number one triggers to creating leaky gut, which yields that Hashimoto's mm. scenario. So also think about the, the bread and grain products, you know, the processed bread and grains. That's the main ones that do it there. Even sugars will cheer up the gut. You might consider doing some type of test to look at food sensitivities, too, because you might be inadvertently driving a process without awareness. So that's a lot of stuff to think about, but your mind is going in the right direction, Elizabeth. Hang in there. Check the right things. And if we can help you with that, certainly we're, we're more than happy to. Um, Carol in Florida, 18-year-old son has cerebral palsy, and she's looking for alternatives to Miralax for constipation. Is magnesium citrate a safer option to give him every day? Carol, it is. It's much safer. Miralax, I'm not a fan of it. It's got some sugar in there and things like that. It's not going to help your son at all. So definitely go down the magnesium citrate train. You can also use some Senna tea. Uh, that works pretty good. But magnesium citrate, you want to dose up until you make the bowels move. Keep that going until the bowels become loose and then dose back down until you find the place where you get regularity. Uh, most people are magnesium deficient anyway. So having persistency and consistency of magnesium intake is probably good anyway. Anonymous in Tennessee is 19 years old at a healthy weight and she exercises moderately but she has low estrogen and hasn't had a period for almost a year. She wants to know what she should do. Well, Anonymous, well done with exercise because to see 19 yes. years old exercising, I'm like, I salute you, my friend. Well done. Uh, so here's the thing. There are times where the intensity of the exercise might create a scenario where you don't have periods. The reason mm -hmm. that is is because exercising is synonymous with the body of being chased by a bear trying to eat you. And so just knowing that... <laughs> that's why I don't like it. I knew there was it. a reason. Yeah, that's why I stop at people. No, the, the <laughs> idea behind it, it creates stress. It, it's a healthy mm. stress, but it's like if you were being chased by a bear all the time, if you're getting yeah. my drift, and the body's yeah. interpreting that, the body is going to... We're not having babies. Yeah, it's going to make the hormones go down because there's no reason for you to procreate at that point. And yep. so... I would say not be too concerned about it at this point. It's not a negative, right? It happens a lot in athletes, a lot in athletes, and they get all weirded out about it. And I say, don't worry about it because your body's just under stress. If you want to kind of change your workout a little bit and see if you can work some high intensity with low intensity and moderate it like that, bounce it back and forth, that may be something you can try if, if you're concerned about it. Stephanie of Wisconsin, Stephanie, I just butchered your name, Stephanie in Wisconsin, <laughs> wants to know what supplements or suggestions you have for men who have joint and muscle stiffness. She said her husband's 36 and in good health, but he can't even bend down and touch his toes. Mm. How 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 uh, abnormal is it that a guy can't bend down and touch his toes? Because I'm not thinking my husband can do that. But I don't know. Well, I mean, maybe it's just me. We do need to work on flexibility because as we know, yes. as we age, the muscles get tight and the less limber we become, the less You're not wrong. Yeah. So, Stephanie, here's the thing, right? Um, 
with with this goes for men and women too, but this is a protocol that we should be doing. Um, back to my omega threes. We need that omega threes. The one that I like, honestly, and if you're not taking omega threes out there, folks, anybody over about twelve, you need to take omega threes at least this level. Uh, I like Bio Omega One Thousand personally. It, it, from what I've read, it's the fastest catch the capsule, and it comes from anchovies, and it has you know less potential for heavy metal buildup. You need three of those. I would like to see your husband take three of those in the morning, okay? And then at the evening time, I would like to see him take SPM Supreme. That stands for Specialized Pro Resolving Mediators. And the reason they take those is because those resolve the inflammation. So we want to monitor it, blunt it, and then resolve it in the day. And I would get on both of those. And then if your husband's not taking vitamin D, as in David, mm. at 5,000 IUs, Bio DK, dose of one on that one, and that would certainly help. If you want to go down further down a pathway of resolve, you might want to consider a peptide called BPC-157. That's a wonderful peptide that's designed to repair tissues and joints. Wow. So that is a plethora of information. Yeah. That is all we've got time for today. I um, I was thinking last time you and I talked, I told you I'd gone on a walk. My friend Tracy's trying to take me out and we've been you know, hiking up by the falls oh. and just trying to go walking, you know, in the morning. And I think the first walk she took me out on, we walked like three and a half miles. I'm telling you what, the next day I couldn't call. I couldn't walk down the stairs. I was like, what is wrong with me? And she said, uh, you need to take an Epsom salt bath. Yeah. So would you explain, because I just think it's so good for the moms who are listening, people who are trying to get back into exercising like I am. I had a pretty rough surgery, as you well know, mm -hmm. um, several months ago, and I'm trying to get back now into exercising again, getting back into shape. And it can be difficult. Yeah. What is the benefit of Epsom salt? And here's a really good question for you. Is there a good place and a bad place to get them? Because I was informed a couple of weeks ago that not all Epsom salts are created equal. Yeah, I, I haven't looked at the, uh, you know, the, the sourcing of them enough to give mm -hmm. a good answer. But here's the way it works. Here's the mechanism of action. Of uh, the two minerals that sort of antagonize each other, calcium is known as a constrictor. Magnesium is known as the great relaxer. So here's why that works. When you get in the bath, it heats you up a little bit, right? It opens the pores. The magnesium comes in, and guess, voila, who gets to be relaxed? That's how it Hello. works. And it's wonderful. And people should be yeah. doing that. I think another thing people can do to, to help them unstiffen themselves, and this is a little more painful, but it's actually good. You turn <laughs> on that shower real cold, and you hop in there real quick. And just stay there for like 30 seconds or something. Like Holy that. moly. If you okay. Can, and then get out of that. Warm up a little <laughs> bit. Do it again. Do it a couple of times. And then go get in your Epsom salt bath. There you go. Really? Okay. What is the, what's, what, why? Well, why? Why should we stand under cold water? Cold. We really want to know. Causes the blood to, to do what? To go inside. It's going to try to warm you up. Yeah. Right. And then hot will allow the blood to come to the surface. So. Cold is going to constrict, pull back, right? And then when you get the uh -huh. heat in there, it's going to push blood out. So you get a, a nice healing effect of that. It's like, that's why athletes do the cold bath. And then The cold plunge. Are you a cold plunger? I've done it before. I, I, I don't have like a, a tub in my in my house that fills up with ice, just so people know. Um, <laughs> but, but I do do that occasionally because it's really helpful. But it does take, a, it's a gut check, trust me. Oh, oh, I did it like three right. months ago. So my, some friends invited us over to, they have a really awesome sauna at their, in their backyard. And then they have a cold plunge. Yeah. So we're in the sauna and we're just getting hot, hot, hot. And we're yeah. like, okay, let's go out. Oh my goodness. I was like, did people die from this? It <laughs> is I felt better. traumatic. But after you do that a few times, you do feel better because it promotes you do. a brand new push of, of blood flow. It's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. You know what else is awesome? You are awesome, <laughs> Dr. Mark Sherwin. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. You are awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's always a joy to have you. Just encourage the heck out of me. So I appreciate you coming <laughs> on here and encouraging. And you know what? We are, you guys, everybody, we're getting Dr. Mark out here. We're going to do something really awesome at the new Homeschool Resource Center. So stay tuned for that. We're still trying to figure out how we can sync our schedules up, which is not 
easy. We'll get it But done. Dr. Mark Sherwood, you are a treasure. I really appreciate you. Thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. For more information on Dr. Mark Sherwood, you can go to sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. Remember, you guys can visit him. It doesn't matter where you live in the country. You can sign up for an e-visit and I hope you will check it out again. That's sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi. If you have a question that you would like to submit to the show, you know how to do that. Go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. If you want to subscribe to the show and have your question at the top of the list, the way to do that is to go to Spotify and become a subscriber. You guys, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for writing in. I know Dr. Mark and myself really appreciate the encourage, encouraging words that you guys send in. Your questions are phenomenal. Keep them coming and we'll come right back here again soon and we'll answer some more of them. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you back here again tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.